One of the most common questions that I get asked is, should I start making and selling dice as a job? And the honest answer is, I don't know. I make tutorials and videos for my job. I've never actually sold dice, but I want to be able to give you a good answer to that question, so I figured I'd figure out what the process is like for a full-time dice maker. My buddies at Tarragon Terrain asked if I wanted to make 265 dice for their Kickstarter they did a while back, and I thought that this would be a perfect opportunity to really dig deep into this question. So I said yes. So let me take you through the process from the beginning. This isn't a dice making tutorial tutorial per se, I've got a bunch of those, but the best way to learn is to visually see what I had to do, I think. So I'll go over a lot of the dice making steps, but this is just to get you a realistic expectation of a full-time dice maker, at least from my experience. So let's start with the three 3D printed dice masters that Tarragon sent me to work with. They have their logo on them, they look great, and I'll go over the prices and time spent on this at the end of the video, but for now, let's just get started here. I'm going to use Dixie cups to make my molds throughout this video, and I'm going to cut a hole in the bottom, either a hole like that or just cutting off a slice from the top, that way you have a little bit more room to work. Either will work. Using some packing tape, we're going to make our molds out of these. Using big Dixie cups allows us to have really durable molds, which I need because I'm going to be using these molds a lot through the video. I'm going to place one face of my D20 down onto the tape, usually the bottom number, or the one in this case. I usually have to widen the tape by putting a second or third piece on the side so that they work with the Dixie cups. You can always use a smaller cup, like a tiny red Solo cup, but I like the Dixie cups because they're really easy to remove from the molds. I place the open face down and now we can see the dice from inside. I'm going to use some hot glue to seal up the bottom. You definitely want to do this. If you don't, you run the risk of your silicone pouring out the sides, which I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. So after placing these down and hot gluing the sides, they're pretty much good to go. I do like to cut off the excess bit of tape, that way I have a little bit more room to work. And now we can start pouring our silicone in. Throughout this video we're going to use some sort of clear 12, though we will upgrade here in a little bit. This silicone is mixed equal parts by volume, so I mix up an equal amount of part A and part B, stirring for a long, long time so that they have no streaks and we don't have any problems with uncured silicone. I'm going to pour these in through the hole we made in the bottom of the Dixie cup and pour very, very slowly. Especially for these first molds, we're going to make a ton of dice out of these molds that are going to turn into pseudo masters for way, way, way more molds. So we want to make sure these are done properly the first time. If you go slowly, it gives the silicone a chance to fill up all of the holes and voids inside of your dice. If you have too much silicone, in this case I don't think it's that big of a deal because they'll just be more durable as far as molds are concerned. I put them inside my pressure pot insert and stick that inside of my pressure pot. We're going to set these in there at 40 psi for around 12 hours. That makes sure they are solidified and very cured before we move on to the next step which will be making the lids to these molds. You can see because of the hot glue we had hardly any leaks at all, though we did still have some and if we didn't have the hot glue this silicone might have poured right out of the edge, and we would have had a ruined mold and had to have started all over, so I think the hot glue is a necessary step. After we carefully peel the tape and hot glue off of the bottom and remove the Dixie cup from the mold, we have a very, very flat surface in which we can start making the top half of our mold. If when you're removing the tape you do get some air bubbles inside of your mold, not a big deal, you can usually just push those out by pushing on the silicone, but now we need to move on to cutting some keys or registration marks into the bottom half of our mold so that we can lock in the lid once we make that lid part out of silicone here in just a second. You can see we have one on the actual face of the mold and then four on each of the sides. That usually gives us a unique lid for each mold. We're going to use some tape and petroleum jelly to make the top half of our molds. This is the same way we've done cap molds over and over except we're doing individual molds this time. I prefer to do this over a slab mold because with the slab mold making multiple d20s if any one of them start to wear out I have to remake the entire slab where if one of these wear out it's really easy to remake one mold. I use a rubber band to seal these things down though I do change that in the next iteration because I improved as I kept going along with these. I put some petroleum jelly on the top and then mixed up a new batch of silicone to pour over the top to make our lids. I make them all about half inch to an inch thick, that way they can hold the resin down as I'm making dice, and after I finish these, putting them in the pressure pot, I made 12 more dice. This way we can move on to making the large amount of our molds. Using those molds I really wanted to test them out and make sure that they were going to work out fine before we continued on, so now that we've done that, you know how to make molds. We need to repeat that process with the 15 dice that we now have and make 15 more master molds. After making those 12 extra dice and testing the molds, making sure my method was going to work, I was ready to start the project. So remember when I said I upgraded on that silicone? Yeah, you're seeing a whole gallon of sorta clear 12 silicone. It is a bananas amount of silicone. I'll probably only need about half of it for this project, but I can always use it on future projects and it costs me less in the long run to buy it in this format. So 
So I have a huge amount of silicone, which comes with its own problems in learning how to use it. For instance, I have to use giant things like this total boat measuring cup to actually pour it and mix it in. I had to try and figure out how to get an accurate amount of silicone from that bucket into that measuring cup. And that's more difficult than it seems. So I had to use a small cup just to pour it into the larger mixing cup because trying to tip over that bucket and get an accurate amount of silicone each time was just impossible. So once I figured that out, I had to mix it up. Turns out silicone's pretty thick and using wooden utensils like wooden stirring sticks just doesn't work in this volume. So I had to use actual silverware or in my case gold for wear, I'm not sure, and filled up all of these molds creating 15 bottom halves of molds. Those were then going to be put inside of a pressure pot and because I knew I was going to be trying to do this in a speedy manner, I got a new pressure pot insert that I made for a brand new pressure pot. This one actually comes ready to be used for resin. It's just expensive, but it's way bigger and way deeper than my normal one. This will give me two pressure pots for this project and a deeper one for future projects. So I think it's a worthy investment. Now you can probably make all of these molds using less silicone. You can see when I take the tape off of here, I have a lot of extra silicone on the bottom. Again, I was going for durability knowing I'd have to make a ton of dice from these molds. I cut out a bunch more keys and registration marks into the bottom half of the molds. That way I have unique lids for each one and I add on my tape. Remember before when I said don't use the rubber bands, it's because I found that hot glue actually works a lot better at keeping silicone from leaking out. And that's also the reason I didn't explain the petroleum jelly step earlier because now that you have the hot glue on, it actually keeps the tape stuck to the silicone a lot better. Using the rubber bands, the tape tended to move a lot and so it wasn't ideal. You want to get petroleum jelly on every face that isn't the dice face that's sticking up from the silicone. That way this top half that you're going to pour the silicone on has no issues coming off of the bottom half, which we need to mix up a whole new batch of silicone for the top half of the molds. And the amount of molds you need is totally dependent on you, but I wanted to get this done in 10 uses of the pressure pot for dice making, and so I wanted to have 33 molds. So let's rewind it here a little bit, because that made 15 molds, and we have 18 total now, and let's do the exact same thing again, giving us 33 molds. I figured that's enough to where we should have 330 dice that come out, but I'm probably going to have a lot of failure, so I want to have extra. I'm going to place these dice molds onto some wax paper and start mixing up some resin. Now, for making these dice, I'm going to use Envirotex Light Resin. It's a casting resin that cures in 12 hours, and it's a one-to-one -one by volume mixture. I got a ton of mica powders from my dad, who I think bought some unnamed micas off of Etsy, and I thought this was a great way to use some mica powders that I don't really want to use all that often. And I'm going to use some black alcohol ink or various colors. This is just one of 10 separate colored sets that I'm going to make. I figured dirty pours are a really good way to get nice looking dice without taking too much work, just by mixing the resin and pouring a little bit of alcohol ink onto the top. Just a few drops, it will spread out and give you a nice layered look, and every three dice that I fill up the molds on, I go ahead and pour some more alcohol on. That way I have a nice consistent dirty pour look. I want to make sure I have enough resin for both the bottom half of the molds and to put some on the lids. I always pop the surface bubbles with the lighter, that way we don't have any voids inside the dice or try and prevent as many of those as we can. And because we have those registration marks and keys, they should basically lock into place if you've done everything right. Now, what you see here is 15 dice. It took about 10 ounces of resin for 15. My other pressure pot is going to hold 18 sets of dice and it's going to take anywhere from 10 to 12 ounces of resin each time that I fill that up. You can see why I quickly had to end up using two gallons of resin for this entire project. It is a resin intensive project to use cap molds like this but they are far more consistent. After they sit in the pressure pot for a while we have a bunch of dice that need to be removed from their molds and I gotta tell you I was not expecting how much time removing Removing the dice from the molds was going to take. And it's not like I can ignore that step. I have to remove them before I can pour the next set of dice in. But each one of these probably took about two or three minutes to get the dice out of the mold and make sure they were cleaned up and ready to move on to sanding. So that took a long, long time and I did not factor that into having to make these dice. So that was upsetting and it usually took about two hours to remove all of the dice from each set of silicone molds before I could even start mixing up the resin for the next set. It was a lot of work, but hey, worth it. And you can see I'm starting to get some nice colors out of the dice here as I add these gray sets to the ever-growing box of several colors of dice that need to be sanded. This box was causing me major anxiety knowing that I'd have to sand all of these down. Luckily, it was probably only four faces on the dice, the ones closest to the one. So that would be the one's place, the seven, the 13, and the 19's place on the D20. But as soon as that was done, it was time to mix up some more resin and start on another batch of dice. I did 
a ton of different colors and we'll go over all of those here at the end, but you can just see how time intensive this actually is. Just taking dice out of the previous molds and pouring resin to put in the pressure pots for the next set was probably about four hours out of my day. It was a lot of time. So after putting 10 different sets of dice into the pressure pot, we finally had enough dice to move on to sanding. You might think that I would just use this sanding method where I could just put them in my vibratory sander, but you couldn't put enough dice in there to make it worth it, and it took like 72 hours for them to be fully polished. So since you had to sand the beginning of it anyway, I just decided to sand them all by hand. It actually ended up being faster that way, but oh my gosh, it was a lot of work over a long, long time. I ended up watching both seasons of Barry on HBO, amazing show by the way, twice because I watched it by myself and then I told my wife it was a great show and that we needed to watch it together. If that indicates how much time I spent sanding, it was probably about 40 hours over five days. It was a lot. My hands were cramped by the end of it, and if I didn't have this orbital sander, I can guarantee you I just wouldn't have finished the project. I would have given up on it and said, you know what, you'll have to figure this out on your own. But they were all sanded to completion after going through all grits of Zona paper so that they were at a glass-like shine, and it was time to ink them. Oh boy, was I not ready for the inking. I ended up using two different colors predominantly, this apple barrel black. I still vouch that this is one of the best blacks on the market, even considering Vallejo, Citadel paints, all of those, it's my favorite black. We want to get real sloppy with this paint job here. It is far more important to go fast than it is accurate. We're going to have to wipe off all of this paint anyway, so just go fast and get paint into every single part of all of the faces of the dice. We want to make sure we don't have any areas missing paint, of course, but going fast is going to save us a lot of time in the long run. When I calculated how much time I was going to have to spend doing this, I did not factor in all of them being D20s. I calculated it based off of full dice set. I thought, well, it takes me about an hour to ink a set of dice. Well, that's including things like the D6, the D4, the D8, those ink so quickly. The D20 probably takes as much time as all of the other dice in a set combined. So this step was a ridiculous amount of hours. Again, I'll talk about how much time it took and how much money it took me to do this towards the end, but the second color that I used was Retributor Armor from Citadel Paints. It's one of my favorite golds because it's kind of dark and shiny at the same time, so it looks good with a ton of different backgrounds colors. After I finished painting all of my dice, it was time to remove the excess paint from being sloppy. Again, this is far faster than trying to be very, very neat in your painting. I filled up a small bowl with 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol and got to wipe and use in shop towels. Look how long it takes me to remove one face of paint here from a D20. Yep, imagine that times around 300 <laughs> times 20, you know, because for each face of a D20, it took a while to get all of the paint off off of this. I would say that this is easily the most time intensive step is removing the paint from the dice as you're done. Now you could have slowly wiped it away with your finger like I normally do when inking dice as soon as you were done inking one face, but you'd still have to go back in and do this and so I don't really think that would have saved me any time. It was better to just go fast and then come back in the end and do this and wipe off all of the excess paint. I found it very helpful to just roll the d20 in the alcohol, pull it out, and then wipe off all of that excess paint using the shop towel. That was the fastest way for me to get this done, though you may know a faster way. Honestly, this was the worst task by far because you couldn't even really zone out while you did it. You had to make sure that you got all of the paint off of each face, and that takes a lot of attention. But while I'm doing that, why don't I go ahead and tell you about the sponsor for this video. You may remember them before, Tarragon Terrains. This is their terrain Kickstarter that I reviewed a long time back where it had the magnetic terrain. Well, they've started branching off into other products as well, and I want to tell you about them because I'm doing some stuff with them. Tarragon is making a bunch of new dice trays and dice coasters and asked if I wanted to do a collaboration with them. And so I said, heck yes. You can see the kind of collab image on the side there, and they have a Dice Goblin insert and Dice Goblin written on the side. Made with this curly maple, it looks really shiny and really cool and has magnets to hold in those dice coasters I talked about. Now, I had never heard of a dice coaster until they reached out to me, but they're honestly really, really cool. They come in a bunch of different colors, unless you're getting the Rabinator one, which is a curly maple, but I think it looks great. But it's meant to hold your drink and dice on the side, as well as has slots on the side for cards if you're doing things like wargaming and have war scroll cards, or if you're just playing traditional tabletop gaming that has a ton of different cards for different games. They have a couple different designs. This one that's kind of a dice tray coaster combo. This one has a bunch of magnets in it to hold your minis on. That way you can be a DM that has a ton of different minis and a couple of different traditional designs. This curly maple one has a leather insert and a green acrylic on the side because of course Dice Goblin, and they all have magnets so they hold well together and are easy to travel with. Now if you like those, 
those, that's great because I'm going to be giving away one of the Curly Maple Dice Coasters in the description down below, so make sure you enter that. And if you want to get one of these, that's in the description down below too. But let's go on back to the dice making. Now, Tarragon Terrain said they only needed 265 D20s. Well, using the pressure pot 10 times for making 10 different colored sets of dice, I had the capability of making 330. Did I make that many? Heck no. Because there were so many that had defects, I only ended up making about 280 different D20s that I would consider fully complete and ready to be shipped off. I had a bunch that had voids in them, whether that was just air bubbles that were trapped inside, or there were issues sanding, or even some of them just got kind of oblong in shape. Maybe the lid was too tight, maybe I squished them down too much, I don't know, but I'm glad I made extras. Now let's talk about cost and time that went into this. Now I had to spend a lot of money just to get this up and working. I had to buy a gallon of silicone, which cost $250, a second pressure pot, that cost $250, two gallons of resin, Zona papers, gloves, paint, alcohol, miscellaneous other things like sticks, cups, etc. Total, that cost me about $850. As far as time spent, the mold making process took five hours over five days. The resin pouring and dice removal, the resin pouring took about 10 hours over 10 days and dice removal, 20 hours over that same 10 days. Dice sanding took about 40 hours over five days. Dice painting took about 40 hours over 10 days. And then paint removal and polish took about 45 hours over 10 days. All of this I did while filming. And if I include filming time, it took about over 200 hours. If I don't include filming time, it was 155 hours over 40 days over the course of several months. So let's just say for that 155 hours, not including filming time, I was working minimum wage at $7.25. That would total $1,123.75. If I include my $850 worth of startup cost into this, that totals $1,973.75 that this really cost me. Dividing that over 280 dice, I'd have to sell each D20 for $7.05, including shipping, just to break even for the work that I'm doing. I went on to Etsy and found handmade resin D20s available for anywhere from $10 to $50, averaging about $22, not including shipping, and full sets anywhere from $16 to $150. After having done this, I'm thinking all of those price ranges are pretty reasonable depending on what types of dice that you're making. Now, a huge reminder for all of this. All of this was my experience and my first experience. Having to go back and do this again, I could probably do it in half the time knowing what I know now. And there's a lot of things I wouldn't have to rebuy. I wouldn't have to rebuy a pressure pot, for example. So disclaimer, take everything that I've said and shown you and all the information that you've seen here today with a massive grain of salt because your mileage, not may, will vary from mine. I'm sure a lot of people make a ton of money from this and a lot of people don't make a lot of money from this. I personally like making tutorials, so that's what I'm going to stick with for the time being. But if it ever becomes profitable for me to want to do this, maybe I'll jump into it sometime. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope I'm not ruining anybody's dream of doing this. That's not the purpose of this video. It's just to give you a realistic expectation of what I would have to go through if I were to ever start this job. So I hope that you found this helpful. Subscribe if you might want to see some more videos like this in the future. Let me know if you've had a completely different experience in the comments down below or if this seems pretty accurate to you. Thank you to Tarragon Terrain for helping make this happen. Make sure you enter that giveaway in the description down below. Like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you disliked it. I want to hear that too. But either way, I hope that you have a fantastic day.